Welcome back to our Med Smarter Lecture Series, where we're taking a smarter approach to preparing future physicians. Before we get started, if you'll take just a quick minute and click that like button, and also subscribe and turn the bell on so that you'll be notified when we post new videos. Let's continue on with more gram negative. Uh, specifically, let's talk about Vibrio cholera. Once again, like we said, it is a gram negative organism. It is flagellated, so it has a flagella associated with it, going to be a polar flagella. It can also have some of these fimbrae uh, off of the side of it, but it's just one single flagella. The shape of the Vibrio cholera is going to be comma-shaped. You can see that here in this picture. It is oxidase positive, and it will grow in an alkaline media. Uh, typically, Vibrio cholera is found in developing countries, uh, oftentimes in a contaminated water source. Uh, a lot of times you see People that have Vibrio cholera, the cholera goes through them. They have uh, the side effects, which is a profuse rice water diarrhea that can get out into potential drinking water in these developing countries, and it can spread that way through infected water. So this rice water diarrhea is, is, due, is due to an enterotoxin that will permanently activate our GS pathway which will cause an increase in cyclic AMP, and it does this by binding to adenyl cyclase, uh, which then will lead to an efflux of water and sodium into our intestinal tract, causing that water or rice water stools there. Cholera is sensitive to stomach acid, so stomach acid can decrease its infectivity. It does require a large inoculum uh, unless the host has a decrease in the gastric acidity. So it's ID50, we talked about that earlier, is very high uh, for it to be able to cause infections. So we've already covered this, but how does it transmit? Contaminated water, so some cholera has been present upstream in the water, coming down and somebody drinks the water that has that cholera in it, uh, or uncooked food. And we treat this with oral rehydration. This is the most important thing for patients that have cholera is just that they stay hydrated because that rice water diarrhea can easily dehydrate the patient so we want to orally rehydrate them uh, pretty quickly so that uh, they don't get into a dehydrated state. Let's continue on and discuss Helicobacter pylori. H. pylori is a curved flagellated gram-negative rod that is triple positive. So what is triple positive? It is triple positive for catalase, it is positive for oxidase, and it is positive for urease. So all three of these are positive with H. pylori. The urease in particular is important because we can actually use that to help detect the presence of this infection. So we do a urease breath test where we give a patient uh, a small sample of urea and then we test their breath to see if it has any of that urea that has been broken down by the H. pylori, and that can help us diagnose this. So what's happening here is the urease will produce ammonia that creates an alkaline environment and helps H. pylori survive that acidic environment in the stomach. Most commonly, this will be found in the antrum of the stomach, uh, and that can lead us to gastritis and peptic ulcers. The biggest risk factor for H. pylori infections is going to be peptic ulcer disease. Uh, it can also lead us to a gastric adenocarcinoma or a malt lymphoma. So it is important that we treat H. pylori infections, and there are two different types of treatments that we use. Uh, the first initial treatment is known as a triple therapy, and what we're going to do is use three different medications to help decrease the ability of this particular bacteria to survive. So first and foremost, we're going to use amoxicillin. Uh, if they do have a penicillin allergy, we can switch that amoxicillin to metronidazole. Then we add clarithromycin and a proton pump inhibitor. Okay, So you can think of the triple therapy as uh, antibiotics cure pylori, ACP, amoxicillin, clarithromycin, proton pump inhibitor. That's your triple therapy. Now, we can actually make a quadruple therapy. We can add bismuth in if we have any concern of a macrolide resistance. If you found this material helpful for your studying, please like and consider subscribing to the channel. Also, share this video so that more people can benefit from it like you have.